Hello students, welcome to my lecture series. Myself, Dr. Sangeeta Bhamre, Department of Zoology, SVKT College, Devlali Camp, Nasi. In my la last lecture series, we people saw about the semester first syllabus which is related to the animal ecology. Where in animal ecology, we saw the ecosystems, types of ecosystems, animal interactions, etc. Now, today I am going to talk about the cell biology in which as per our syllabus, very first chapter is introduction to cell biology. So what we are going to talk about this introduction to cell biology. Here I will discuss about cell as a basic unit of life, then importance of cell biology and its application to the industry. So what are the learning objectives related to this particular topic? So here we will talk about the cell means what is actually cell, its definition, then some historical parts means who firstly discovered this cell, its measurements, etc. Then we will go towards the uh, applications means what is the aim and objective behind the study of this cell biology. So what are that fields where this cell biology study can be implemented? So that things we are going to talk in this particular lecture. So very first in introduction to cell biology question arises that is cell. So how we define this cell? So definition of cell biology is, so it's the biological science which deals with the study of structure, function, molecular organization, growth and reproduction and genetics of the cell which is known as a cytology also. So cell biology which is also called as a cytology. So what is basically cell? cell. So simply suppose we are going to define this cell, it is the structural and functional unit of the life, right. So here kytos means hollow vessel or cell or logos means the study or course. This is how we call it as a cell biology or study of cell. So as we are talking about how it is structural and functional unit of the life. So how we can satisfy this particular definition? This is the big question, right. So structural means each and every organism, I am talking about the living organism, right? From smallest to prokaryote, which is suppose unicellular or this um, uh, multicellular eukaryotes, each and every organism firstly is made up of the cell. So if you observe carefully, which factor is responsible for the structure, shape, size of that particular organism? So remember it is the cell. So this is how we can say that it is the structural unit of life. Then what does it mean that it is the functional unit of life? So what happened in our study means in our whole course we are going to talk about the subcellular organelles. So subcellular organelles means what? The various compartments are there where we can see the different type of organelles are there which we called it as a subcellular organelles. So what happened here? Subcellular organelles are responsible to carry out the different type of functions. So that different type of functions which are related to the metabolism. So we know this very well that metabolism actually is responsible for our survivalence. Means what happens here? Cell which is responsible firstly to give the particular structure to that particular organism. And secondly, the functions, body functions means metabolism is there, respiration is there, digestion is there, reproduction is there, etc. So all these activities, physiological activities, biochemical activities are carried out only because of this subcellular organelles. And this is how we call this cell as structural and functional unit of life. That is why according to reference book, we define this cell as it is the study of means cell biology is the study of the structure, function, molecular organization, growth and reproduction. So here this is how we can satisfy this definition of the cell. Then if you are going to talk about some historical part of this cell means who firstly discovered this cell, who firstly observed this cell, who firstly uh, uh, did the research related to the cell at its metabolic activities etc. So it has been observed that English microscopist Robert Hooke in 1635 is credited with the coining 
firstly the sturm cell means who coined the cell term firstly so remember that was the robert hooke in 1635 so what he did he examined a thin slice cut from a piece of dried cork under the microscope especially compound microscope which were built by him in 1665 hooke published a collection of essays under the title My, uh, micrographia so under this title micrographia firstly robert hooke described about the structure of the cell that's why whenever we talk about the discovery of the cell then that time we say that first cell is for, firstly discovered by robert hooke in 1635 one more name which is related to the history uh, observation and study of this cell and that was anton von leeuwenhoek so leeuwenhoek was the first to observe living free living cells he described in 1675 and microscopic organism from rain water so what he did so with the help of this microscopic rain water he firstly observe one moving organism and he label it as a cell then two more name which are associated with this shilden and shon so they said that cells originated from non living thing this is the hypothesis remember but according to some researchers and today it has been proved that cell originate only from the pre existing cell means in history some people are with this particular hypothesis or with this particular theory that cell might have been originated from some non living things so which are that non living things according to this people that non living things especially the proteins this this was the hypothesis this was the history they thought that this proteins are responsible for the construction of the cell but later it was proved with the help of some experiments observation etc it was proved that cell originated only from the pre existing cell means cell any type of a cell any type of a cell is responsible for the construction or origin of the new cell so we call such a theory as a cell theory so what is cell theory i am repeating again cell theory tells us that cells originated cells were originated only from the pre existing cell now we turn towards some measurements okay so in this particular slide you can see that cell can be measured in cell uh, it may be virus it may be the bacteria it may be blue green algae it may be animal cell it may be the plant etc so the size of the cell can be measured accordingly in meters millimeters then micrometers nanometers and angstrom also so what is the importance of the cell biology means here up to this particular slide we saw what is cell how we define this who firstly observed this cell etc now big question is what is the importance of the cell biology why we people are talking about the cell biology or what are the applications of the cell biology so here according to our syllabus this particular applications are mentioned means applications related to the industry so here we are going to talk about the cell biology study or what is the use of basically cell biology in industry so first is cell disturbance so cell disturbance what the cell disturbance means so here have you ever been ill even if it was the tummy bug it will have been your cells that were affected by the poisonous chemicals or toxins from bacterial cells in the bad food means suppose we are going through any disease condition temperature fever coughing etc sneezing so that time what actually happens here cells get disturbed then question arises which factor is responsible for this cell disturbance so remember the pathological organisms especially viruses bacteria or it may be prions which are nothing but the proteinaceous substance means the foreign material when enter inside our body then that time there will be the disturbance which occurs with this particular cell means cell disturbance is responsible to change our physiology metabolism etc so this is the 
first application means with the help of the proper diagnosis of the particular organ cell, we people can understand that what is exactly the problem behind this situation. So this is the first application of the cell biology related to the cell disturbance means especially the diagnosis. Then at molecular level, you may know of someone who has been ill with the disease of disorders such as meningitis, malaria, diabetes, type of cancers, cystic fibrosis or Alzheimer disease. So all these diseases and disorders which are caused by problems which are related to the cell at molecular level. Now in previous slide we saw the superficial thing means suppose cell externally is get disturbed, your organ is get disturbed then that time you will show or the, the some pathological conditions may occur. Now at molecular level, at molecular level means at nuclear level suppose your genetic material, DNA, RNA or any XYZ type of subcellular organelle that is mitochondria, ribosome. So any one of the subcellular organelle suppose is get disturbed, maybe due to foreign material or maybe due to the genetic disorder. So it may relate or it may leads to the variety of diseases, variety of conditions. So which are that conditions? That condition here you people can see related to suppose brain means your brain tissues get disturbed, brain cells get disturbed and then that time which type of condition will occur? We call it as a meningitis. Then malaria, malaria suppose pathogenic organism PYVX we call it as enter inside your red blood cell then that time you will go through this particular disease that is malaria. Diabetes suppose your pancreatic cells are not able to synthesize the particular insulin or glucagon then that time you will go through this particular condition called as a diabetes. Then different type of cancers are there like leukemia is there, cancer related to the brain, cancer related to the digestive system etc. So all these cancers which are caused due to the cell means if you go through the definition of cancer, cancer definition itself indicates it is unproliferative growth multiplication of the cells. Then this another disease is associated with the brain as cystic fibrosis is there, then related to the memory that is Alzheimer disease etc. So all these diseases and disorders which are caused due to the problems which is suppose encounter with your cell especially at molecular level then the physical damage or such as burn or broken bone also causes the damage at the cellular level. Then another is the disease strain by understanding how cell work in healthy and disease state. So cell biologist can uh, working in animal, plant and medical science will be able to develop new vaccines, new effective medicines, then plants with the improved qualities and through increased knowledge a better understanding of how all living things live. So suppose we understood once that what is the problem means which factor is responsible for diabetes, factor is responsible for meningitis, factor responsible for malaria etc. Then that time it becomes easy to cure that particular condition, to cure that particular disease. So how man or human are able to cure that condition? or overcome that condition. So very simple, we, we people will get the knowledge of the medicines, means how we can prepare the particular medicines, how we people can prepare the particular vaccines so that we can overcome that disease, we can overcome that problem. So basically here, the study of cell, its structure will give us the idea about this particular medicines, vaccines, etc. So not only vaccines and medicines for the animals, but here we people can also search the better quality plants also, better variety of plant also by understanding the structure of the plant cell and the diseases which are suppose associated with the various parts of the plant. Next application is for the gene analysis. So eventually it will be possible to produce a health forecast by analyzing your database of genetic and cell information. So here gene analysis means both type of a genes, somatic genes as well as gametic genes. So suppose we people can analyze this both type of genes then at that time what happened? It become very easy 
to overcome the problem suppose which is going to uh, face which or suppose we have to face it in future then that time also it will be very very helpful which is gene analysis the next application is the dna testing so cell biology is not just about the disease it has greatly assisted the human fertility program dna testing has been used in archaeology to provide evidence that a living person is related to a long dead ancestor so especially in the study of archaeology or suppose you are interested in your ancestors etc then that time dna testing which is associated with the uh, cell biology actually can be helpful for the study of this or research related to your ancestors then for forensic medicines there will be the uses of cell biology and dna fingerprinting which will be helpful to solve some crime problems as to solve the murders some assaults etc so these are the various applications of the cell biology especially related to the human being now if you are talking about the plants so gm crop and organ transplant so biotechnology which is the recent uh, important uh, applicable field from the life sciences so biotechnology uses techniques and information from cell biology to genetically modify the crops to produce alternative characteristic to clone the plants and animals so that to produce and ensure high quality food is available with the lower cost and also to produce pure medicines and in the time organs for the many people who need transplant so here gm crop by technology in which the various techniques are available like uh, um, this uh, preparation of or construction of the gm crop then so high uh, construction of the various varieties which are able to uh, fight with the various uh, diseases as bt cotton is there bt brinjal is there uh, variety of the vegetables are there then organ transplant so what happened here by constructing such a type of uh, plants we people will easily cope up the various problems which are suppose encounter with your plants with your crop yield etc okay so here we people can, will able to prepare or construct the better variety of the food as well as cell biology also uh, important in the field of organ transplantation so many people who needs this transplant like heart is there kidney is there liver is there eye etc then that time in the field of organ transplant the study of cell biology is also important one so here few examples which i have mentioned related to the gm crops as gm ripes gm means genetically modified crops so example gm cotton genetically modified cotton and genetically modified rice a basic understanding of cell biology including genetics will be as important as having some knowledge about the computers and internet so today we people are going giving so much importance to the knowledge uh, of this computer knowledge related to the internet etc but with this study of the cell biology is very very important as we people are facing so many problems uh in um, today that uh, various type of diseases are there etc now we turn towards the overview of the cell means up to previous slide this slide we saw the importance or the fields where the cell biology can be implemented so what we saw in this uh, uh, application we saw the gm crops we saw the organ transplantation we saw the disease diagnosis etc so these are the various fields where cell biology can be implemented now we turn towards the overview of the cell what is actually cell what it deals with etc so why cells are small this is the big question so here we people are uh, try to solve this problem as an object grows larger its volume increases more rapidly than its surface area so cells must maintain a larger surface area to the volume ratio i'm repeating again cells must maintain a larger surface area to its volume ratio so to maintain the particular volume ratio here cells are very very small 
microscopy, etc. Now, two types of cells are there, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So, first of all, we will talk about the prokaryotic cell. So, these are basically firstly originated cell. Pro means previously and karyotic or karyon means nucleus. So, firstly originated nuclear or nucleus is nothing but the prokaryotic cell. So, basically prokaryotic cell means the firstly originated cell. Means here this question is solved means whether uh, eukaryotic cells have firstly evolved or originated or prokaryotic cells are originated. So, so many theories, so many experiments were there. So, according to that experiment, it has been proved today that prokaryotic cells originated first and then or later from this prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells were originated. So, this is the fact now. So, how variety of energy sources. So, what are the variety of energy sources that we people can, we people are going to talk in prokaryotic cell. Then, prokaryotic cells are smaller than eukaryotic cell. So, here the rough dimension I have mentioned. So, if you go through the size of prokaryotic cell, so it is just 0.25 micrometer to 1.5 micrometer. So, this is the dimension of prokaryotic cell which is very very small as compared to the eukaryotic cell. So, what are the characteristic features of this prokaryotic cell? So, prokaryotic cells share some common or certain features as all prokaryotic cells have the same basic structure which is the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane outermost covering or it encloses the cell regulating the traffic of material into and out of the cell and separating it from its environment. Means suppose you are going to define this plasma membrane. So, how we can define it? It is basically the outermost covering right or it encloses the cell. So, it encloses the cell simply we called it as an envelope. So, it is the envelope for the cell and what it did, what it does? It is responsible for the regulation of the transportation. Traffic means or traffic of material means the transportation of the material. Transportation of material obviously which type of material will be transported here? The food material, gases, etc. And most important function which is carried out by this plasma membrane is it is responsible to separate the cell from its outer environment. And this is how most of the time we also call it as just the barrier, right? Where it is the region called nucleoid contains the hereditary material of the cell. So, if you are talking about the subcellular organelles, later I am going to show you one diagram also. So, if you are going to talk about the subcellular organelles inside this prokaryotic cell. So, remember one thing, very few subcellular organelles are present inside the cell from which very first we try to focus that is the nuclear material. So, remember here as such true nucleus is absent, but it does not mean that nuclear material is absent. So, just the nuclear material is there without nuclear envelope, without nuclear membrane that material is called as a nucleoid. So, question arises what is this nucleoid? So, nucleoid is nothing but the free floating DNA material, right? And the rest of the material which is present towards this nucleoid is nothing but the cytoplasm. So, cytoplasm, then nucleoid, ribosome and few RNAs. This is just the no, material which is present or subcellular organelles which are present inside the cell. So, this diagram indicates the structure of prokaryotic cell. So, in this picture you people can see very first plasma membrane as in previous slide I told you that it is the envelope or outermost covering. Then towards this envelope one more hard structure is there you people can see that is cell wall. So, cell wall in few lines, not in uh, detail, I am going to tell you made up of peptidoglycan, right? So, cell wall which is made up of peptidoglycan and remember below cell wall, cell membrane is there. And sometimes in harsh condition, there is also one more envelope like structure above the cell wall, it is called as a 
capsule. But remember, it is not the permanent one or it is not the uh, permanent type of a subcellular organelle. In only harsh condition, this type of structure can be seen in prokaryotic cell. Then, as I told you that very few subcellular organelles are there. From this, you can see very well this nuclear material, which is nothing but the DNA as nucleoid. Then few ribosomes you can see, RNA material is also there, etc. So, this is the picture or diagram which indicates the structure of prokaryotic cell. Now, one question or assignment for you, which you have to solve on our Google Classroom. So, what you have to do? You have to explain this question. Means, you have to explain the applications of cell biology, especially in industry. So, in next lecture, we are going to talk about the detailed structure of prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Thank you.